News about Halo Infinite's Battle Pass has just dropped, talking about the price, a preview of what's going to be in the Battle Pass, 343 discusses emotes within Halo Infinite, and some more information on fractures and events. You want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. The channel keeps you up to date with everything going on in Halo. And as promised in yesterday's video, IGN dropped a little bit of news and information and some insights about the battle pass and customization within Halo Infinite. So we're going to go into the TLDR of everything you need to know about this blog update. So if you guys like these news and informational videos, make sure to tap that like button. That really helps out the video channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure to tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So the first thing they actually bring up within this article is like the cost of the battle passes. I don't believe we received a hard fact number when it comes to this stuff, but it looks like we have it now. And that cost for the battle pass being $10. Jerry Hook quoted within the article saying, we wanted to be able to say, hey, look, when you put 10 bucks in, you keep that 10 bucks. Referring to how the ballot passes never go away. You get to keep the ballot passes forever and you can pick and choose which battle pass you want to progress through on the fly. So I think it's a pretty fair price for like $10, like every what, three or four months. I think they said they're gonna do new seasons. And so, I mean, for how much I'm gonna be playing Halo Infinite, I'm definitely gonna get my money's worth. And yes, microtransactions just generally suck in a video game, but Halo Infinite's multiplayer is free to play. So they have to make money off of it somehow. And $10 for a 100 tier battle pass with some really awesome looking customization, which you're gonna show into a little bit later, I'm totally fine with. They also discuss five key points about how they want the battle pass to work within Halo Infinite. One being you can only have one battle pass active at a time, meaning your chosen battle pass is the one gaining experience you earn as you play. And like we mentioned earlier for number two, they said you can switch which battle pass is active whenever you want. The third point being that the battle pass from the test flights is not representative of what you'll see in the final game, which is true. They mentioned that how the progression I think I think it's a like, little bit sped up as you want to get people to unlock and experience battle pass as a whole. So we'll see how the grind really is when the game releases, but they also kind of touch on that a little bit in this blog. An interesting point for number four, they say about every quarter of the battle pass, you'll have a legendary cosmetic in it. Legendary rated cosmetic will be a character cannon related or a new type of customization object with special attributes or effects. And number five, they wanted to point out that event rewards are going to be separate from the battle pass as well. So we talked enough about the battle pass. Let's just take a look in and what's going to be part of it. Now, they didn't showcase the entirety of the battle pass. So I guess they're leaving it for the release of the game, but they showcased some highlighted items that they wanted to point out for everyone here. Most of this is going to be Halo Reach related as season one is going to be the Heroes of Reach theme for the battle pass, which we did cover earlier on this channel and there's some awesome halo reach armor sets there's some new armor sets for the mark 7 armor that's gonna be part of halo infinite but they have some very interesting things i wanted to point out here as it looks like death effects are coming back as you can see here i'm circling about this kind of forerunner disintegration death effect that we'll have which is returning from halo reach which is awesome i love the death effects right there it looks like we might be having the superintendent as an ai which would be pretty freaking sweet i love the superintendent in odst cool to see that come into the game you have literal flaming shoulder pads as an effect as well which is super cool on top of that the flaming helmet returns which is nice and just fire i don't know what the just this fire effect is going to be feel free to leave a comment if you ha have any idea what this a fire effect will be we have noble team's armor sets returning we have noble six carter june Kat, as well as George and Emil. And yes, you can has original recon as well. I mean, I'm a kind of a recon boy, so I'm gonna have to rock this when this comes in. And we actually saw this helmet, the Master Chief helmet within the Strongholds gameplay that was on IGN. You'll be able to earn it within uh, the Battle Pass here, which is awesome. Well, like I mentioned at the top of this video, 343 actually touches on the idea of emotes within Halo Infinite and they decided to go against it and they mentioned why. Saying, we struggled a lot with dance moves for Spartans. We feel that more traditional players would reject Master Chief flossing. However, personal AI, we can go crazy. AI can do what it wants to do. That way you can preserve the militaristic feel without having to break what you consider canon. Unless, of course, of course, Joseph Staten makes up a whole new story about dancing Master Chief. But until that happens, we have personal AI. Now, heretical moment inbound. 
I think dance moves would be kind of fun to have in Halo. I mean, I think it'd be kind of sweet to have like some kind of move to where like, yeah, so you totally dominate somebody right in the game. Instead of like doing a teabag, you can throw an emote on them or something like that. I mean, I've always kind of liked Destiny's emotes. I've always thought they were pretty fun. Obviously it could totally break the immersion and it doesn't really fit into the style of Halo, but it's something I thought would be kind of fun to have for additional customization. Definitely could monetize that, that's for sure. But I think at launch, it's a good idea to not have emotes in the game. Now the way you'll be unlocking things within the battle pass is by completing challenges in Halo Infinite. Of course we've covered this previously on the channel so it's not most of this is going to be kind of a recap but some little interesting bits are just kind of more insightful about how challenges are going to work within Halo Infinite. As we do know they're going to be daily challenges and they're going to be weekly challenges. Once you complete all your weekly challenges you'll unlock the capstone challenge which will grant you a unique bit of customization like an emblem or coding or something like that. Now there's a challenge or for a weekly chance that you don't like there are challenge swaps and then three mentioned within this blog update that 343 will actually be keeping an eye on what players opt in and opt out of challenges for the daily and weekly stuff and they'll be seeing okay well if a lot of people are opting out of doing this challenge which we'll phase it out and then maybe bring in some new challenges as well that people would be more willing to complete so it's not just like 343 every week going like, I don't know, let's make them do this random thing within the game, which is really great to see that they're actually gonna be looking at the data, following player trends and making it so that like, it's not such a obscure, random kind of thing that you have to do within the game so often to just like get yourself a new coding or an emblem or just grind through the battle pass in some capacity. Since you have to complete challenges if you wanna progress through your battle pass. They also touch on events really briefly on here. They didn't really get into many specifics, but more, more just kind of like the idea of events, which we know are going to be in Halo Infinite. We just don't know how they're going to be implemented and how often they'll be. They actually mentioned that in this article saying, so at launch, we have the challenge system that fuels the battle pass and the event system. Events go live every few weeks. Each event will have its own free event pass. This is one of the few timed reward systems in multiplayer and will not include a paid track. You get a special playlist and you get a new reward track for each event. So that's two weeks for an event, one week for a fracture, but fractures come back every month and it saves your progress. And they even do talk about how much they expect players to play. Uh, they don't really provide an actual answer. They just kind of say, well, monitor the progression and events and things like that of how many people are completing it. If it's a little too much, they'll probably tone it down. If it's too little, they'll probably tone it up. Uh, but I guarantee they have a certain number there that they expect people to play every week when it comes to playing Halo to grind through the battle pass. Uh, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. And I'm sure they're gonna be tracking that information as well. They also go into fractures as well. We've covered this previously on the channel. It's your way that you'll be earning your Yoroi armor set through the fractures. And fractures are a way for 343 to implement some unique customization that wouldn't exactly be canon related. Much like we saw with season eight of the MCC has some crazy unique armor sets and stuff like that, but they'll be doing it within Halo Infinite, but maybe not to the scale that we have for season eight, as it'll probably be like meet one core at a time or something like that for the season. But of course it would not be IGN if it wasn't some form of a mess up or some weird thing about being incorrect information. And that information being saying that Halo Infinite is out on December 5th. Uh, that's not true. It's releasing on December 8th. Um, yeah, more effectively the night of December 7th uh, for me to be on the West Coast, which they actually got it wrong here as well, saying the release date is also the December 7th down here as well. So I can understand this one says it's like effectively the release date, right? Since IGN is located on the West Coast of the US. And so then uh, technically it would be like 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is when the game would release on December 7th. But yeah, no, the official release date is December 8th. Nothing changed there. I don't know why IGN typed that in. I mean, the 5th of December is also a Sunday, so that just doesn't make any sense. I think they might just confuse it with posting the article today being November 5th. But that's why you gotta come to this channel, guys, to get the news straight and factual. Which, if you guys are new to the channel and missing any content from me recently, check out these videos right here on this playlist for my, all my Halo news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.